Hello and welcome back to web development tutorial conducted by a CAD Guild. In the previous video, we have learned the concepts of jQuery. If you've missed the previous session, kindly check in the description part. In this video, we shall discuss Bootstrap. So, what is Bootstrap? It is a free front-end framework for web development that is fast and easy to use. Bootstrap includes HTML and CSS based design templates for typography, forms, buttons, tables, navigation, etc. It also includes several JavaScript plugins. Bootstrap was developed by two engineers who worked for Twitter before. It was released in 2014, and since then, it has been the number one project on GitHub. Why should we use Bootstrap? Bootstrap offers several advantages, the most important of these being it is easy to use, has several responsive features, and is compatible with all the latest browsers. How to get Bootstrap? We can download Bootstrap from www.getbootstrap.com. The latest version that is available for download is version 4.0.0 beta. To download, click on the download button and select your preferred option. In the demo video version, 3.3.7 would be downloaded and used. I will demonstrate to you the CDN way of installing Bootstrap. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. All that must be done is to copy the content or code and return to the Sublime Text Editor. It is the same tool which was used in my previous video tutorial. For this tutorial, change the text to HTML. Let's understand this step by step. Start by creating an HTML template. Let's call it Bootstrap Demo. To install this web development framework, we need to paste what we have copied from the Bootstrap website over the Sublime Text Editor. There are also other ways to download the framework. We could use Bower, NPM, or something like Composer. CDN downloads all the features like forms, buttons, image carousel, modal, etc. at once. If all these features are not required, then we could use the Customize option on the website to easily select and download only those components of Bootstrap that we require. The Customize button takes us to the following URL, www.getbootstrap.com forward slash customize. If the Bootstrap installation is already customized, thus thereafter, files can be imported using the command config.json to this page manually. If the customization is done for the first time, then uncheck all those components that aren't necessary. To illustrate, I would show what features I'd be using. Let's say, need drop down, not needed, nor buttons. I don't need glipicans. I don't need forms or panels. I can select features based on the requirement and deselect those that we don't require before we move down to click on the Compile and Download button. The button will initiate the download of the customized version of Bootstrap. The download will also include a file called config.json, which can be used later to download the similar copies of Bootstrap from the website. Let's head back to the Sublime Text now and start analyzing the Bootstrap classes that can be used. First, the Bootstrap Grid System. The grid system divides each row of a web page into 12 columns. Customization of columns is available as per the necessities of the user. For example, add a div element. To it, then add a Bootstrap class, either a container or a container fluid. To illustrate the difference between the two, add the container class first and save the file as bs underscore demo dot html. The style attribute could have been an aspect of customization, the style tag for the div element. For instance, create a border of, say, two pixels, solid red. All right, let's go back to the browser and open the file that we have just created. The file has been opened. The name bs underscore demo dot html can be seen on the screen. This isn't entirely accurate. Thus, I'll add content in the div, which is, this is a div with the class container. And save the file.
Let's head back to the browser and refresh the page. We can see here that since I used the container class for the div element, it leaves spaces on both sides of the container. Now, if we head back to the code and change the class from container to container-fluid, and then refresh the browser, you'll find that container-fluid occupies the entire width of the page. Going back to the code, let us use another container that I really like. We can get rid of the static text that I used before. As mentioned, to divide the browser into several columns, we can use different classes. So, once again, include div element with a class defined by the syntax for columns, row, followed by another div. Technically, we can have as many divs as we want, depending on the number of columns required. With class defined by the syntax col, hyphen, the size of the column, XS for extra small, SM for small, medium desktop, and larger desktop. I'm going to use a medium desktop, hyphen, number of columns we want to combine. As we know, Bootstrap divides the row into 12 columns. We can combine some of these columns together. For example, I would combine four columns and add the class name that would be used for the column as static text. The condition for using bootstrap columns or grid system is that the sum of all columns in this row should be 12. We can copy this class here twice. To take the total number of columns in every row should be 12. Now, if I go back to the browser and refresh the page, I can see that there are three containers of equal size on display. It is not necessary to divide the row into columns of equal width. For instance, I could also change the numeric value of the container class and remove the last div to create two containers, one with eight columns and the other with four. When we go back, we will find that the first container is made up of eight columns and the second one of four. Similarly, we can use several other classes. For now, let us use 12 columns here and get rid of the additional four columns here. In this column, I want to demonstrate a class that is to bootstrap. Let us consider that the button must be added to the web page and style it. This can be done by adding the button by using the button tag. For type safety, we'll type add equals button. The most popular class of buttons is BTN, followed by the type of button we want to add the default button. We can name this button default. Similarly, if necessary, more buttons can be added. Also, instead of the default type, classification of primary to the secondary button and vice versa is possible. So all three buttons have different classes. BTN is the syntax. The moment we add BTN, Bootstrap will automatically recognize it as a button. This is followed by BTN-default, which is a class, in this case, like primary and success. If the browser is refreshed, the three buttons are there and called Default, Primary, and Success that are all differently styled. Now, let us move on to another interesting concept of Bootstrap known as the Glyphicon. At the website www.glyphicon.com, there is a list of halflings that are supported by Bootstrap. Symbols could be used to address humans as the icon for our users. We could take advantage of the halflings offered on this website. The syntax to use a Glyphicon is simple. We are going to get rid of these buttons and replace them with a span tag. The span tag will require the class Glyphicon followed by the name of the Glyphicon. The Glyphicon we want to use in this case is called Glyphicon-User. Let us save it as it is and refresh the browser we can see a human icon on the display. There are several Glyphicons available on the website. If we want to add the Glyphicon for print to show a print icon, we can change the Glyphicon name to Glyphicon-Print and then return to the browser. Here we have the print icon on our screen. That was today's session. Thank you for watching this video. The next video introduces Angular. Don't miss it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest updates and information regarding our courses. Join a CAD Guild now to kickstart your dream career. A CAD Guild. Average is dead.